A Swain's World, party time, excellent. <laughs> Marcus Conte reporting today. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I had a really big show for you today, a really big show for you today. Let's talk about Bernie Sanders and the four racists. <laughs> Donald Trump, Bernie Sanders, Pelosi, uh, and the four racists are going at it, kicking it. I'll tell you who the winner, I think, is, and uh, we'll talk about that shit. The Great Pacific... The Great Pacific Garbage Patch. You heard about this shit? I didn't know about it until uh, until somebody told me about it, man. Who's told me about it? Thomas. Uh, Thomas Robinson. Thank you very much. Thomas Robinson. Shout out to Thomas Robinson for bringing the Great Pacific uh, Garbage Patch to my attention. And uh, we'll take a look at that. And also uh, Epstein Cash and Diamonds. Bah, flight risk? <laughs> you betcha. So let's jump in. So St. Bernie. St. Bernie front and center, right, sticking, a, sticking his foot in his mouth, backing what I see as four racists, you know, yakking away, uh, trying to make a case for something, you know, but it, it'll, it'll ultimately boils down to racist. so racism. So here's what I got in the mail. I want to talk about my, my mail. I'm on Bernie Sanders' uh, uh, fundraiser list, you know, the email list. I get the emails. I've been getting them since 2015, since I gave my $27 a long time ago. Right. So I get this email. I still get them right once in a while. When I call Donald Trump a racist, this is what I mean. <clears throat> so fucking Bernie Sanders sends this shit out. Um, at Trump's he, he uh, edits Trump's or he sends out Trump's email of viciously telling and viciously telling the people of the United States. This is Trump speaking. And viciously telling the people of the United States, the greatest and most powerful nation on earth, how our government is to be run. Why don't they go back and help fix the totally broken and crime-infested places from which they came? Then come back and show us how. <laughs> uh, that's a jab. That's a stab. That's a, a political, uh, uh, you know, jostling, right? Bunch of, bunch of four, you know, rookie, um, rookie uh, congresswomen. Uh, who identify themselves as as other than white POC, right? Is uh, taking a jab at Trump over something. And what is what? Is, what do the racists? What does a racist always do? A racist default argument is you're the racist. You're a racist. Oh, you're pointing out that that uh, that I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so you're a racist. That's essentially what it is. So. Bernie Sanders, let's just stick with Bernie Sanders and we'll talk about the four racists. This was a racist attack against Representatives Ilhan Omar, Rashid Talib, and the four. We know the, the four. Uh, uh, Omar and Talib and uh, Presley and Alessandra Acasio Cortez. Uh, it's. Uh, it, it is unacceptable, and we must stand in solidarity, solidarity uh, with these young legislators. Oh, really? I, I beg to differ. Right? What is, that is why today I am asking you to respond to Trump's racist attacks by splitting a contribution. <laughs> <laughs> you call your you call your opponent a racist, and then you say, "Give me ten bucks." Damn, Bernie, man, showing your colors, Bernie. This is a mistake, a political mistake. Now, I agree on Bernie with Bernie Sanders. Still makes him the best candidate out there. He has his flaws. This is one of them. Gun control might be another one. Immigration, definitely one of them. Uh, he has his social social flaws. His social addiction to. Uh, you know, appeasing socially broken people, uh, but his 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 economic policies and his economic strategy is is par excellence. Is an extension of Occupy Wall Street. Is a a way to bring down the oligarchy. Ah, fuck you if you don't think so. But here's here's the problem. I have let's continue with Bernie. I have said all along that this president is a racist and a xenophobe. Uh, it's just it's just bad strategy, Bernie. You lo you're losing you're losing smart people when you say that. Uh, now, say unfortunately, sixty percent of the country believes that they believe. I guess that Donald Trump's a racist and a xenophobe. Xenophobe being people he hates people out you know from other places. 
Um, and you know the 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 try the Trump tried and true is only thirty percent of the country. So when I say single payer health care for all, universal single payer health care, free college tuition at city and state universities. When I say uh, you know uh, demilitarize the military industrial complex, bring down big pharma, compete with big oil using a green new deal, I'm not alone in saying that, and I have no shame whatsoever. And for the, you know, for the buffoons that still run the same default, he's a socialist, socialist, commie socialist, commie little socialist, right? I, I, you know, your, your argument, your argument falls on deaf ears because I stand with, with, at this point, stand with the majority of the people. But these racist comments, right? The, the comments of trying to make, make these folks out to be something other than racists is really ridiculous. And here they are. Here's the four, right? They're up there. They're, they're, they they believe what they believe. Oh, they believe, and they identify themselves, I guess, as you know, a Latino and a Muslim and a black and a Latino. Right? They they identify themselves as anything but a red blooded American. Uh, so Bernie Sanders, I don't care what these people do. So so Trump's strategy, right, of uh, 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 you know attacking these folks is is a brilliant idea because. It encompasses, they encompass the, the economic policies of democratic socialism, the thing that Bernie Sanders has been promoting for 40 years, which is a way to deflate the, the oligarchy and monopoly, to take the money away from the big banks and, and that take, uh, you know, unlimited federal, you know, free money from the Fed, right? a, a centralized Fed, right? Uh, Right, so Sanders Sanders represents that 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 hope that we can sudden that we can uh, reduce the disgusting level of income and wealth inequality in this country. Right, he represents that and still does, and always he's the only candidate that does. Right? Trump is the opposite of that. Trump is an accelerant for for uh, uh, income and wealth inequality. The poor will get poorer, the middle class will move down, and the wealthy will continue to, to rise. So here's Trump's, um, here's Trump's, uh, some of his stuff. This is, I mean, we will never be a socialist communist country. If you are not happy here, you can leave. It's your choice and your choice alone. This is about love of America. Certain people hate our country. It's just stupidity. It's stupidity piled on top of more stupidity. And it's a shot at, at socialism. So it's, it's actually a very, um, it's a very easy, if, again, if you have Bernie Sanders standing next to Trump, it's a very easy uh, thing to debunk because what is it that you're standing for? We have in this country socialism for the, for the 1%. Right? They get all the, all the breaks. They get all the tax breaks. They get free money. They compound millions and millions of dollars in stocks. Right, The stock market inflates. It's a bubble. It inflates for them. They, they work in a debt economy. Right, It's just... It's just it's socialism for the rich. A bank, a bank defaults, boom, they get zero interest rates, they get bailed out. The, the, the average American defaults on, on a student loan, probably one of the most disgusting loans ever invented. Uh, it follows you around from 18 years old to the grave with, uh, you know, and you wind up paying 10 times or at least the amount that they're trying to uh, uh, extort from you is 10 times what it, what it originally was. So, so your debt travels you to the grave. And I know you're American and you're proud of that. No, no, no. I've spent the money and I'm proud of that. Meanwhile, the banks don't give a flying fuck. They're not going to pay. You see the difference? You, you must understand economics to, to, to continue the stupidity, the stupid argument that, that Reaganomics, that the extension of Reaganomics that Trump believes in is helping you in any way whatsoever. So here's the other problem with Sanders right now is that here's the, that's strike one. Here's strike two. Raise your hand if, gover- if your government plan would provide coverage for undocumented immigrants. <laughs> Raise your hand if you if you support if you support. No, Biden had his hand up. Let's just get this still with everybody's hand up. Everybody on the stage wants to give undocumented people in this country free health care. Right? Fundamentally disagree. Right? What what don't you understand about America first? Americans get get health care 
first. Then you talk about all the others. I don't, I don't understand that. I will never understand that. What is so hard about understanding the Second, Amend- a Second Amendment that allows people the right to protect themselves, the right to bear arms? Where, where, where can you infringe on that? Where do you, you know, the, the right to speech? Right? Calling someone, you know, names is, is speech. Right? It's, not, it's not a, if you want to tie it into racism, well, then that makes you the racist for, for doing that. So, so there's where I, I, you know, part with the, with the Democratic liberals on this stage is that although I agree on only one of them, really, maybe two, uh, Sanders and, and uh, well, on this stage, it's only Sanders, uh, on the economic policies of, a, of a, a system of Occupy Wall Street where you break down the banks and return power to the people. I disagree with all of these folks on social issues and uh, on economic issues and all of these folks on really social issues at this point. Although people are, are, should be allowed to, to, you know, live you know, free and prosperous without the threat and, of violence and threats of, of hatred. If you don't have thick enough skin to, uh, to, to be insulted have you have 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 an insult leveled at you, and you you don't know what to do with that, and then you cry racism. That's your fucking problem, man. That's your problem, right? And if you want to come into a country and you want to move to the front of the line, I'm with Trump. I'm like, fuck you. Get to the back of the line, or don't come home. Go back to the country where you came from, and tell it. You know, go fucking fix your own problems. So I'm with Trump on that, but so so Sanders. But here's here's the problem. Here's where it's brilliant for Trump and and disastrous for Sanders because Trump is successfully labeling these four kooks, the four racists, as democratic socialists, right? Here's, here, here, I'll show you two articles from Zero Hedge. One spins it uh, against democratic socialism, and then the next article shows you exactly why democratic socialism is the answer. Right, so here's the smear. What is democratic socialism? Democratic socialism is a growing movement in America promising every citizen the most basic human rights, including but not limited to free health care, government guaranteed jobs of $15 an hour, free college tuition, guaranteed housing, broadband access. How would the government pay for all this? Again, it's the same old tired argument. How are you going to pay for it when we show you over and over again who is stealing the money? You've got to take, steal the money back and give it to the people. Right. Pro- productivity in this country is is good and it's high and it, it'll, it'll get higher if you give people actual jobs and not jobs designed about uh, designed around inflating debt by rightfully appropriating money from terrible, evil, oppressive, hardworking, uh, entre- entrepreneur, <laughs> enterprising citizens who have earned wealth via the dreaded free market that has led to the unprecedented human flourishing. Governments are known for being the most efficient spenders of money, right? So it's an on and on smear that it, it ignores the real fact of income and wealth inequality and the cause of it. All right, so here we go. So here's another one on the same day, right? Same, I think it's the same author. Same author was it Tyler Durden. Yeah, Tyler Durden. Again, they publish under the same name, right? So it has been a great recession uh, for a few, right? So again... Socialism for the rich, a, a devastating recession, uh, uh, living with less than, than ever before in American history uh, is what most Americans are dealing with, right? So, so this article goes on and it tells you all about it's been the most uh, anemic expansion on the books, right? While Trump is, 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 uh, is claiming productivity, Right, productivity is actually me- is a measure of GDP, which is at this time, without getting too deep into the economics, is is a is a function of debt. Right, the GDP, the gross domestic product, is driven by debt. Print more money, debt Americans so that they spend, right, and then G- gross domestic product rises. Right, it's it's a fake number. It's 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 based on on a bubble, a debt bubble which I've been saying all along. Here's, here's an actual way to, uh, a nice chart that looks at it. Right? It looks at this. Uh, from 1947 to 1979, you had this, you had almost equal rise in 
uh, productivity, compensation, and wages, right? Hourly, right? So uh, in, the, in that era from 47 to 79, it was 100% change, 119% change in productivity, right? And 100% change in compensation. So it's, it's pretty much compensation and productivity rose equally. Now, from 1980 to now, you have compensation at only 8% and, and, and um, productivity 80%. So this 80% of productivity goes in the pockets of the monopoly, right, in the form of debt at this point. Right? So, so it's hard to understand. So uh, I'll look at that in a second. So, so that's, that's all I'm saying is that the, the, um, the economic um, uh, ideas of a, of a democratic socialist idea Right, is not communi- commie socialism, communism from Russia in the 1940s, Cold War, Russia, oppression, totalitarianism. It's, it's, a, it's a simple system of, of, of deflating the, the monopoly, just bringing it back down to size so you don't have billionaires like, like, like you know, Epstein with fucking, you know, $52 million in cash in his house. We'll talk about that in a second. Right? And, and just billionaires with unlimited resources to screw you over. So let's go into the garbage. Uh, the garbage. <laughs> so here's uh, uh, Thomas Robinson said, um, Hey, Marcus, that floating island of plastic that's two times the size of Texas that's floating in the ocean. Let's talk about it. All right. So I found, I found this article, Thomas. Great Pacific garbage patch, floating island of trash in the ocean is now twice the size of Texas. Now, this is disgusting. Right? This, is, this is evil, fucking evil, you know, uh, environmental shit going on here, right? This giant garbage, garbage floating, plastic floating in the motherfucking ocean. Right? Pacific Ocean is being treated like a giant dumpster, and it's starting to look like one, too. A floating island of trash dubbed the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, GPGP, now stretches 600,000 miles, according to studies published in scientific reports, it's more than twice the size of Texas, and it's growing every day. I got a little video of it. Here's, here's, here's some, some videos that came up with the term uh, Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Captain Charles Moore is often credited with the first observations of the patch, a constellation of microplastic particles that captured the public's imagination. Captain Charles Moore had described the area. He said, look, I'm in an area roughly twice the size of Texas where I'm doing my transects, and that hit the media by storm. But aren't these islands of trash? They don't exist. It's more like a smog of microplastic particles, billions of them, very toxic over a wide area. Even when they become brittle and break apart, plastic pieces persist. Unable to oxidize or become waterlogged like metals, wood, or paper, all types of plastic are designed to defeat natural decay. In general, High density polyethylene. See, we don't have a problem in this country. We don't need a green new deal. We don't need to uh, to address any of the uh, the uh, environmental threats to our country, right? Because look, it's we don't have a problem, right? We got a fucking six hundred thousand square mile, you know, sewer floating in the ocean in plastic, and you wonder why all the animals, all this, the species, are dying off. The whales are choking themselves on plastic. Right, we got to do something about this shit, right? Is it real? Yes, it's fucking real. I just gave you the evidence. There it is, right? You see vote video. Right? It's not a concentrated, like, an island where you could walk on it, right? That's not what it is. They're saying it's just a diffused uh, space of ocean where particleization, I guess, it, you know, it attracts each other and it, it kind of sticks together and, and, and meshes out in the ocean, right? But who's throwing the fucking garbage? Who's throwing all this plastic in the ocean, right? That wasn't part of the deal, right? When I buy a plastic fucking, you know, something, I, I don't expect it to... I expect it to be disposed of in the proper way, maybe in a landfill somewhere, not thrown out in the fucking ocean. Right? This shit is crazy. Is it U.S.? It probably is. It's probably our products getting, you know, getting fucking thrown into the ocean. So... so I don't know what else to say about that other than it is real and that, uh, you know, we should probably think about doing something about our, our economic, uh, our, our eco, 
ecosystem, the way that we treat our, our planet before it's too late. So Jeffrey Epstein back in court. We'll talk about this briefly because I'm getting tired of talking about this idiot. So Jeffrey Epstein is uh, was in court yesterday to for bail. I, I didn't. I've been. That's all I've been doing all week long is covering this case. So he's in. He's in. He's in jail. He's not getting bail until Thursday, possibly. It doesn't look like he'll get it at all. Right, and so here he is sitting in court. Here's the uh, the latest diagram because there's no there's no cameras in the courtroom, so he's sitting there in blue scrubs, right? And um, he's definitely in there. If you if people keep saying, "Oh, he's not in there," he's fucking out. He walked out the back door. A great theory, right? Someone said, "Oh, big false flag, the blackout in New York, the blackout." You heard they had a blackout in New York. I, I heard because I live here. It's in, it was in it was in Midtown and Upper West Side. Right? It was a big distraction to get Epstein out of jail. <laughs> really? That's fucking good, man. It's clever, right? Big move covers the little move. Ah, that's some psyop shit. That's some psyop fucking deep shit. I, you fucking guys believe that shit. I don't know. But nonetheless, Epstein is on record as being in the Manhattan Metropolitan Correctional Facility. Uh, here's, his, here's his number, right? Cesar Sayak, too. You want to see? I'll show you. See... Caesar, Caesar, Sayak, Caesar Sayak, Caesar, 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 spell it right, County Caesar, pow, Caesar fucking Sayak is there too, right? 57-year-old white male, right? So they're all, these two knuckleheads are definitely there, right? There's, there's a metropolitan uh, place, right? So he's down there, right? So let's talk about let's talk about Epstein's cash as he sits in jail. He sits in jail with no bail. So here's his money as a part of as a part of trying to get out on bail. You got to show your assets. So this is how he revealed his assets. This is amazing. Jeffrey Epstein, fifty six point five million dollars in cash. Holy shit! You know how big that is. Remember when Trump said he he said because he worked in the casino business he says he says you ever see a million dollars in cash it's like it, it fills up a room right how many rooms this guy's got fifty six rooms full of cash and oh no he's not a flight risk <laughs> that's only the cash he's he's showing you he probably has another pile stashed up his ass somewhere or somewhere under that you know Lolita Island or wherever it is fixed incomes of fourteen million equity one hundred and twelve million right. You love, you love these billionaires, right? You love the, the economic system that allows this to happen, right? That's what, you're all, that's what you guys are all about with the, with the Trumpism, right? It's crazy, man. I, it's just, I don't understand it. Hedge funds and private equity, he's got $194 million in equity. Fucking, it's just crazy. Look at his properties. $55 million for his Manhattan uh, place. Uh, New Mexico, $17 million. His Florida, $12 million. He's got a con he's got a place in France, eight million. His island, one island, he's got two islands. One island, twenty-two million, the other island, sixty-three million. So they clock him at a half a billion. So he's a half a billionaire. Oh, it's poor, poor, poor fucking poor uh, poor Jeffrey. Right? He's only a half a billionaire. Uh, he's got oh, he's gonna house what shame for for shame. Right? Now, here's the other thing. Is he a flight risk? Yeah. Here, here's another thing. Jeffrey Epstein had Piles of cash, diamonds, and a Saudi passport, an expired Saudi passport in his safe. Uh, now, that is, that is the, the, the definition of flight risk, right? Because if you're to flee, right? If you want to flee the country and all you have is, is your body, your passport and your body, you can't take piles of cash. You can't trek a million dollars in cash with you in a, in a suitcase. You can't take more than 10,000 cash outside of the country. But diamonds, oh, the, the girl's best friend, those little, little things, right, that, that are a lot of money. So if you get a one nice size, you know, fucking, I don't know how many carat diamond, right, and put that in your pocket and that thing is worth like $2 million, right, or you got like a couple of them, you got a pocket full of really, really valuable big rocks, I don't know, how much could it take up? A fistful of diamonds you put in your pocket, stuff it up your ass, you do whatever you want, you hold it in your mouth, you... You know, you, you stick it in your vagina. However you get that, that shit on the plane, right? Uh, you, wherever you land, then you can, you can fence that for immediate cash. Right? 
that's that's how that's how that's the purpose of having spare diamonds laying around so that if you need to get up and go with a fake passport you can board you know go through customs and you have this you know there's a lot of diamonds in your pocket and especially if he has a Saudi passport you go to Saudi Arabia they'll buy those diamonds you could you know the the, the sheiks and whoever they'll buy those diamonds right up right they'll buy the shit up so so Epstein, uh, is he going to make, based on this new information, I don't think he's going to make bail on uh, Thursday. I doubt uh, very, very likely. He, it, it also is a, a comment here that, um, that says it right out, it, that, that basically says that uh, people who are, are, are held convicted or held on sex trafficking charges very rarely make bail. But we shall see. We shall see. We'll see Thursday. So uh, Marcus Conti reporting. Um, so also, I, I, if anybody wants to send me a hat, you know, hey, listen, man, I'm, 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 you know, I take donations, right? If you want to send me hats, I'll wear your fucking hat, right? I prefer new hats. But if you have a hat, right, if you're an advertiser or somebody, you want me to wear your hat, I'll give you a, you know, shout out. Just email me, you know, email me with the number right here. It's fucking email. Well, it's, it's, it's in, it's, it's down below. You look down below. If you want to become a Patreon of this channel, I appreciate it. And uh, PayPal, uh, uh, thank you very much. So, um, so yeah, if you want me to wear your hat or, or even a T-shirt or anything, I, I'd be happy to, uh, to explore those, those opportunities with you or just for shits and giggles, you know, man, because I'm always, in, I'm always in, 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 on the prowl for a, for a cool hat. Marcus Conti reporting.